Welcome back to Naval Action and I've decided to do one of my guides again. Um, I decided, I uh, initially thought I wouldn't do these until the UI came in, the UI changes came in because I'm essentially going to have to do all my guides again once the new UI comes in and it's actually a lot of effort. Um, but I've had a lot of comments both in-game, uh, messages on the forum, messages on some of my videos. Could I show folks how to make money um, since the wipe. Uh, it seems to be a, a, a trial and tribulation for many a player. So I thought I'd redux my how to make money video. Um, it's probably my most viewed video. It's certainly a bit dated now. I think it's got over 20,000 views on it, which given the size of the player community um, is all right, I reckon. Um, now, I am not the great czar of naval action, but I do know how to make money. I, I play far too much I suppose. I, I wish I could do this in real life um, and I could just play naval action all day and live on the interest um, from my accumulated real life money. However, in game I've done alright um, but there are folks who probably know lots of better ways to make money than I. But this is a good way to get you started. So I'm not, I'm not much of a braggart mostly because I'm not very good at things. Um, but just to give you a little bit of credence, uh, I think the wipe happened a week ago, uh, maybe six days ago. Um, oh, they've moved the downtime forward and it's going to be a patch. That's good. I think they're putting more coal mines in now. The poor Brits have actually managed to get a coal mine. Anyhow, that'll date this video. Um, so after a week, I've got 830,000. I've probably given close to a million away to other players. I've kitted out two indefatigables. Um, I've made a trader's brig, I've built a shipyard, I'm actually moving my shipyard at the moment so I don't have one today but I will have one by the weekend, a level 2 one by the weekend. Um, and So let's have a look at uh, how to make money and get rid of that and go back to this, hang on, where are we? Um, so there's lots of different ways to make money and I'll go through these in a little bit more detail. Uh, biffing um, trading, crafting, uh, you'll be glad to know you can still make money from prostitution, and just some general comments. So without wanting this video to go on too long, I'm not going to prattle or try and entertain you with lots of funny stories in between, because uh, otherwise this video will run on far too long and no one's ADD attention span will allow them to watch it. So let's get stuck into some of the rules of making money. You always have to consider the following four things. Time, which is synonymous with effort. It is right and valid that the amount of time it takes to you put into something um, will almost always have an impact on how much you get out of it. Um, so by example, if you sailed out of KPR, did something and sailed back in, it took 20 minutes and you were a millionaire, I wouldn't need to make a how to make money video. So time is a big thing. Fun. For me, there is no point. I hear a lot of people talking, oh, the grind is big. I don't like any game that makes me grind. Uh, I like to play a game and accumulate as I go. So I have to say, I tend to mix up how I do things. I don't only pursue money. I spend as much time sailing around with a mate, snotting something, uh, or helping to build hostility, which is a bit of a grind at the moment, um, or doing some trading, or doing some crafting, or building some ships. So um, fun, I think, is something you manage yourself. If you find that your pardon me, activities in naval action are closer to doing a job, you're doing it wrong. So you have to maintain a certain amount of fun. Risk. So there's two different types of risks you need to consider. One is the activity you're doing, how risky is the activity you're doing. And the other is how much of your capital are you risking? If you've got 100,000 gold and you go and buy 100,000 golds worth of goods to sell and make profit on, you have to know while you're on that sale that should you get caught and killed by a dirty stinking pirate and lose everything, it's not the game's fault you've just lost everything. It's because you just put it all on black and the house rolled red. Or actually, if it's a pirate, you put it all on red and the house rolled black. Um, so you've got to think about your capital. Now, um, I've done a couple of things. I So my first 50,000, uh, I'll risk it all and I'll go back to being in my basic cutter and slutting around if I have to. 
But once I get a couple of hundred thousand, I try and basically risk half my capital and build it up from there. So basically it gives me two chances to not completely lose everything. And then eventually, when I at the moment I've got nearly a million, uh, and like I said, I think I've probably earned about three million, uh, given a million away, spent a million on ships and shipyards and building buildings um, and gathering certain resources, etc., etc., setting up outposts, all that sort of good stuff. Um, once you've got a head, so once you've got half a million, six hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand, whatever that number is that gives you that working capital. Um, I try and pretend that 200,000 is zero. Why 200,000, Jaheel? Because 200,000 is about the cost of buying a good ship, uh, be it a player's resold indefatigable or a, a nice trincomalee on the market um, and kitting it out with cannons and buying enough repair kits, etc., etc. Um, so... Um, Consider how much of your capital you want to risk. And of course, there's reward. Uh, no, no matter what you're doing, there's a certain element of reward. Um, and you have to consider, you know, is the time and the risk worth the reward? Now, if it's a lot of fun, it doesn't matter, in my opinion. Um, but is the time and the risk? So if I'm doing a two-hour sale to make 10K, um, I'm probably thinking, and it's a zero, you know, zero risk, uh, it's probably not worth the time or effort. So you've got to try and balance those. Now, the other thing... Uh, as my grandma used to say, is money goes to money. She used to say, get out of that, you little bastard. But she also used to say, money goes to money. Um, and it's very important you realise, in those first days when you're on 20 grand, 30 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, my God, it seems impossible. How the hell has anybody got 2 million? Well, if you've got, say, 400,000, you can make 400,000 in 40 minutes. So the more capital, you, and that's with only risking half of it, the more money you have, the easier it is to make money. Um, and, and that's just life in general. Money goes to money. Money is a magnet. Um, there was the old joke, um, you know, how, 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 could, uh, you, how could Donald Trump make a billion dollars? And the answer is give him two billion to start with. Um, no, but generally, money goes to money. Right, amble on. So, biffing. Now, throughout this whole gibbering on how to make money, doing it with friends is better, right? That's just a thing. But a lot of people like to solo. Um, I do a lot of soloing because I haven't got many friends. Um, so generally, I think it'll take you about six to eight missions in your cutter to get enough money to do anything else than be in your cutter. Um, once you've done six or eight missions, you've probably got enough to buy some lobby guns for your surprise. Now, the redeemable surprise we get um, tragically uh, has a butter hole. And other than using it to chase down and cap harmless traders, it's not particularly good. But what you can do is you can put low guns on it and then use it to carry on doing your lobby missions. You'll still be able, you'll be able to smash your lobby missions, maybe do two or three of them uh, before you have to go to port and get... Uh, more stuff just because even though it is made of butter compared to the sort of things you meet in the lobby missions it's a beast um, the indefatigable you get as a redeemable is absolutely sexy time super duper ship um, but to kit it out I think you need about 175,000 gold just to kit it out in cannons so imagine the tears should you lose that on your first or second mission uh, the surprise, I think, from memory, is about 80,000 to kit it out. You have to remember that when you do leave your cutter, um, you're going into a world where you're going to have to buy repairs, you're going to have to buy crew, um, and you're going to have to repair your ship and, and replenish your crew when you get back to harbour. So you do need to sort of save 20k or so to cover the costs. Um, but you can easily do a mission, say, if you're in your indefatigable and it's gunned up, you could easily do a mission against, say, a frigate in a bell pool or something. And out of that mission, you'll walk away with 25, 30K and probably 5K's worth of repairs um, and a couple of hundred worth of, uh, three or 400 worth of putting crew back on your ship. So then you can very quickly, once you've got your indie gunned up, um, start making 25, 30k a mission. Uh, I have to say, if you do that with friends, you can double that, right? You can jump into missions against, say, two of you, can jump into a mission against about 500 BR of enemy ships, say, an Ingi with a frigate and a 
navy brig or something um, you focus down one ship you focus down the second ship and then you work on the big boy you try and leave the big boy behind use your speed draw off the little ships spank them you take very little damage doing it because you're tough uh, and then you go and work on the big boy and the pair of you work on one side and just while I remember a quick tip if you're in the cutter the best thing with the cutter is it can turn on a dime so I'd recommend, I'd recommend this in general anyway, always going in with prepared because it's always nice to get a free shot off before the AI is loaded or even an enemy player. And I'm a big fan of charged shot because it forgives bad angling. If you take an angled shot rather than your shots bouncing, that charged shot will penetrate. So I tend to go in load one side with charged, the other side with ball. Um, and blast it with charged and then because it's a cutter I almost do circles around one side of the enemy ship um, so I can essentially dump two broadsides into it uh, in the same time as it can dump one broadside into me and you always try and present an angle or your nose or your ass I know your ass kills your crew uh, but you're in a sinking game and in a cutter you get free crew at the end of the mission you can repair everything for free in the open sea repair thing -o. Um if you're with friends, I recommend you share assists. So if you've got enough damage on a ship to get the kill or the assist, go and move on to the other ship. Let you Make sure your matey gets um, an assist. So an assist is 5% of damage, I think. Uh, so it's about, on, on the lower ship, ships are the same class as you in a surprise or even an indie. Uh, 20 hull penetrations is probably enough to get you the assist. Share the assist, share the kills, that way you, you all get more money and more XP and more PvE marks. And if you're grinding up hostility, uh, you also generate more hostility. The other thing to do is, let's say there's five of you starting off in basic slutters. Um, do a rotation where you all pool the money so that one of you can now sail a surprise. And then go back out, do the same missions. The guy in the surprise shouldn't hog the kills. And then when you go back in, you share the money, you get your second guy into a surprise. And once you've got your surprises kitted up, get out of them as soon as possible and get into the indies. And indeed, in the indies, indefatigables, um, you can even put lower caliber guns um, on the decks until you can afford to properly gun them up. Now, of course, the other way to make money is the one that requires you to have huge big balls, metaphorically speaking. There's actually quite a few lady pirates out there. Um, now, pirating is probably the most fun way to earn money you're basically trying to steal other people's shit uh be that their ship or be that their ship and their cargo you need to take the fleet perk if you want to be stealing people's ships so you can put it into your fleet and sail it away and put the ship on the market for other players to buy um and, and then obviously sell any any goods they have um the problem with pirating is you will sometimes get killed so it's the big boy game pirating really um, a lot of people play the victim when they see one person pirating in an area everyone runs away from them uh, and this is the big advantage for pirates people are scared of losing their ship so um, you do have that advantage however in the new meta as you exit a battle um, you can't hide and people will jump on top of you and bash your pants in if that nation is so inclined. So the best pirating is done on trade routes um, around maybe free ports or ports that we know have sexy time goods in them. Um, and that way you can also make a lot of money. And if you know your trade routes as a pirate, you'll know whether or not it's best to snot the person coming into port or hide and snot them as they leave the port. So these are the th sort of three main ways of making money from sailing ships. Uh, I have to say, unless you're pirating, and hats off to those who do, because that's where the real hardcore fun is. Um, but if you're going around banging on AI fleets uh, or doing missions, um, do it with friends. Now, you don't have to be in a clan. Uh, I'm a big fan of being in a clan, a man with a clan, etc., etc. Uh, but you can just do it with one or two. You can do it in pickup groups by blaring out in your nation. Uh, anyone else want to do squiggly bob missions? Uh, I'm in a basic cutter and I'm a noob or I'm an indefatigable and I want someone to help me go after 600 BR things uh, and buddy up and just, you know, share the love. Um, so that's how to make money from biffing. Now, the next one is trading. Now, trading can be split into four primary components. I'll try and show you these before the bloody server shuts down. 
Um, so playing the market. Now, really the traders tool, let me just stop myself being logged out, otherwise I won't be able to show you anything. Hang on. Uh, thank you, lovely devs. Um, so the traders tool um, is your friend. Um, and uh, just by a super easy example, so there's four different ways you can trade. Um, playing the market, deliveries, delivery bonanza and farming. So let's look at playing the market first. This is the easiest way of making money and once you've got your first 40 or 50k, um, this for me is the way to start really spinning up the dollars. So I'll show you the simplest trade route in the world. Where am I? I'm in the wrong place at the moment. Hang on a second. Let me just um, go back to KPR. Um, so the simplest way in the world is to find somewhere close to you uh, that sells something, uh, that you can buy something and then sell it somewhere really close and then sell it again. So basically you're just doing a simple trading thing. So to do that, jump into the traders tool. Now here's one I prepared earlier. So I'm in KPR. Um, I've typed in Ligum Vitae Log. Now you have to search for this. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, Ligum Vitae Log. And what it tells me is um, that I can produce it at Carlisle and that often means where it's produced often people sell it there and indeed the um, NPCs will often sell it there and you'll see I can buy it for 114 and I can sell it at KPR for 147 so that's 30 gold uh, a piece profit um, and of course you can expand I've, I've brought the distance down here you can expand that out and you can find um, so here, if we go to Bone K, for example, where it's currently available, we can guarantee it's available at Bone K. I can buy it for 127 gold. Uh, sorry, for 185 gold. So that's no good. Uh, Jaheel, that's a rubbish example. Uh, you need to be able to find places where you can buy it, obviously, for less than you can sell it. Um, so if we find here, I can buy it at Bugle K. Here we go. This is a better example. I can buy it at Bugle K for 126 and then sail it to KPR for 147, but that's only 20 gold, Jaheel. Yeah, but it only weighs four each, so if you're in a trader's brig and you've got a nice fat hold, you can take 400 units, that's 8,000 credit for just sailing to Bugle K and back. Now, the first time you do it, obviously you can only make 20 gold per unit, but then you can start look at more, looking at more exciting trades. So, um, what I've done, for example, let me go back here. Is this the one? Yeah. What I've done is um, I sailed to Lanavas. I took a screenshot of all of the items at KPR before I went. Um, and then I've created myself a little profit and loss. So if I buy indigo from Lanavas, I'll make 160 gold. Fine leather, I'll make 152. Cuban tobacco, that's the bingo, 480 coffee 110, cacao 120, and I've also discovered that historical artifacts will sell in KPR for 67k, and black iron wood will sell for about 30k. Now what you have to realise is these prices fluctuate, because as more people sell to the market, then the um, sell price goes down, so classic market saturation, for some strange reason the buy price stays the same, but that's naval action, stupid economy for you. Um, so if we come back here, um, this is the easy money, right? And you can start small. So some tips here is, is find things that aren't heavy, so you can carry lots of them, that give you a profit. 20% um, is a good profit. And then what you can start doing is looking for goods with a bigger profit margin. And what you'll find is the goods with bigger profit margins tend to be heavier and or, or tend to cost more. So a great example might be something like uh, Madagascan jewels, which you might be able to buy at, say, 10,000 and sell at 14,000. Uh, they're heavier, and of course, you need more capital money. So this is the money goes to money. This is the snowball effect. Um, and, and, and so this is playing the market. Now, the next thing to do is the delivery missions. And again, if I just bring naval action up, uh, I'm under pressure now because they've moved shut down an hour forward. And I'm just going to zip back to Cartagena because it'll it will defy me now. Um, now, the delivery missions in a port, um, they, they sort of change over time, uh, but they will sort of stick for a few hours. So you, you, can, you can sort of know it's still going to be there. So if I go to missions and delivery orders, 
You'll see here 11 hull repairs to Coco Blue Coca, 1650, 20 tobacco, Assam tea, 208,000, medium carriage, and another tobacco to Dariana. And I know Dariana is quite close. So 40 tobacco to Dariana. So what I'd do is then I'd bring up my map, go into the traders tool, and I'd have a look for tobacco. There's tobacco. Uh, and unfortunately, nowhere near me has got tobacco. So where's the nearest place with tobacco? So Carlisle, Gracias a Dios, and Bragman's Buff. Now, I might conclude that for the profit, sailing from here to here to here just isn't worth it. Um, but what I would do is I would find one that is profitable. And as you sail, put your smuggler's flag on. As you sail, stop off at some of the other ports and do what I did um, in printing the, um, the screen off like that. Stick it into a Word document or whatever. Um, whatever you've got that will allow you to store an image, even if it's into a paint shop and you just save it as a JPEG with the name of the port on it. And what you'll discover is that all of a sudden you'll find out that, ooh, these French gold levers, I can buy them for 4K and sell them here for 6K. So you'll develop your own trade routes. Um, so I tend to combine playing the market, which is just buying something cheap at one port and selling it for a better price at another, with delivery missions. I use the delivery mission to make me go somewhere to get something. Then when I'm there and on the way there, I stop off at a few ports and that gives me great candidates for playing the market. And then what you'll find is you can develop a trade route. So, for example, you can buy, I can't remember what it was, I think it might have been muskets from Dariana. You can sell them for a profit at Benavista. You can then go in with your smuggler's flag to Portobello. You can pick up some wine there that sells for a good price at Great Corn. Nip across here, pick up the tobacco um, and do the delivery order uh, to wherever it was it needed to go so that's a great way of sailing around relatively low risk if you know that the waters you're sailing in are safe obviously higher risk if you know the waters you're sailing in are dangerous so this again is where the friends come in if you know the waters are dangerous then perhaps both of you take your surprises with your brigs in tow and should a baddie fall upon you you can you can fight him off and tell your briggers to run away um, um or you know maybe one of the guys goes and he takes his indy and you you and your mate are both in the brigs um and the brigs run away while the indy fights off the uh the baddie the baddie pirate in his uh, surprise and the pirate of course doesn't have to be of the pirate nation it's anyone trying to steal your ship um, now, the delivery bonanzas are the big boy missions, and this is where the real money can be made. So um, if I come here to my missions, uh, you'll see two Gold Coast Ivories uh, will give me 127,000. So I will have to sail quite far to get those. Um, and so I'll try and find a mission or a item that I can take to the port where I can pick up gold. This might be Williamstad or something. It might be an hour's sail. But what you'll find is for a 60k output, you can make 127 coming in. So again, if we go to the traders tool, I think Gold Coast Ivory things are quite far away in the, this particular case. Uh, what are they call Gold Coast Ivory. Uh, yeah, so Williamstad is where they are, but they're 13k. So that's a 26k outlay, um, and I'll make a hundred and something k on the mission. Now, what you'll also find is that KPR will pay 55,000 anyway. So if I made the long hike, and it is a long hike from KPR, that's like an hour's sail to Williamstad with my um, smuggler's flag on and hoping that darling cloggy people don't bash me up for going into Williamstad and then sailing back. Uh, but I, 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 with a 40k... Um, starter money, I could make 120k. That's a huge boost. Now I've got 120k, I can buy 10 Madagascan coins and sail them back here and double my money again. Um, so that's 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 the snowball effect. It is the way to go, um, and 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 that's a good thing. Now uh, let's go back to the Prezi. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Where are we there? All right. 
So that's the delivery bonanzas. Now the last one is the is another easy one. This is a steady income, and this is farming. So farming is just very simply this. So I'm in KPR, um, and uh, in KPR I've got. I'm not in KPR at the moment, and I'm going to be logged out in five minutes. I'm in KPR, and in KPR um, I've got both an oak and a fair um, building. So I can go to my buildings, resources, and I can farm oak. Now do the maths. So it's about 300 gold to pour four oak out. So that's about 75 gold and oak. I can come to my fair. It's a little bit cheaper for my fair. It's about 70 gold. So I pull that out and then I go to the shop and I check out what price uh, the market is currently paying for fur log. So it's paying 99. So I could put an order in to sell my fur at say 98 don't undercut by lots because you're just hurting your mates if you do that i could sell my fur um for for 98 and basically it would mean that i could i could empty my whole fur forest out if i sell two-thirds of it it covers the cost of the fur and the last th the third of the fur i can now use for crafting or whatever and you can you can very quickly tell you know there's no hemp so if i had hemp i could put hemp on it a bit of a blown out price maybe 200 a unit uh, oak log and coal so coal's prized at the moment um, uh, but if we go to things like oak log um, you'll see that oak log in fact let's stop scrolling stop being an idiot and, and, and just search for it if I go to oak log um, I can sell oak log for 90 89 a pop so although I'd only make 14 gold a unit I've got a thousand units uh, I can sell 900 of them and it basically means the 100 oak I've pulled out I can then use for myself for free. So think of it as like sustenance farming really. So that's the farming element. Um, now crafting. Um, there's a lot of components you can make that people will want to buy. So people need provisions. Provisions are fundamentally made from uh, the things you get from fishing salt and food you do have to make some barrels for it i think from memory um, you can make components so a lot of crafters don't like having to build the frames or the um, knees for the cannons because they eat up all their labor contracts so if you're not going to be building ships you could burn your labor hours making provisions or components or repair kits. So repair kits are really expensive, to be honest, for the amount of repair they're doing. The AI sells them for about 1100 each. Um, you can make about a 300 profit per repair kit. And they are always selling on the market. So be, they, um, be that rum, be that rigging repairs. I wouldn't make rum. I'd just use it from where you can pick it up, to be honest. Rigging repairs or hull repairs. There's good money to be made. So if you're not a crafter and you've got nothing else to do with your labor hours, um, if you've got other than maybe a little bit of farming for uh, sustainable income, because owning some hemp farm or, or, or fur or oak is just a fantastic way of having a guaranteed steady income. Um, lastly, uh, cannons, of course, are a big part of the game. Now, it's very expensive to create a workshop or a shipyard i mean a, a level two shipyard costs you half six hundred thousand in gold by the time you've got there plus um a lot of materials to get there too but once you've got a shipyard set up um then maybe either by buying pve tokens um, or, or just saving up your own pve tokens to redeem the uh, blueprints for the ships um and then or even um, buying pvp tokens or converting um then you can start building ships and selling ships and ships are rare and good ships are rarer so you really want to um get hold of there's a great site done i love the naval action community there's this fantastic site that's been done where's it gone don't tell me i've lost it here it is and it tells you about all the new different types of woods so i could have a look at making a sabi cool frame with a mahogany planking um, and then that will tell me the effects it has on the structure and the armor and the thickness so perhaps if i was wanting to build a, 
um, something that was good at chasing down ships but could take a bit of damage, I might go with a Sabiku Mahogany. Uh, it's quite good for speed. It's quite. It's got reasonable structure, so on and so forth. This is a fantastic site. I will put a link to it in the um, description of this video. So if you're a crafter, this is this is gold. This type of information and hats off to Mike for putting this together. Good man. I didn't ask Mike for permission to use this, so uh, sorry, Mike. Um, but there's nothing on it that says I can't. So anyway, I'm crediting Mike. Mike, brilliant work. Uh, on this beautiful little easy to use um, bit of stuff well done um, so you can do ships and cannons um, I, with ships I sort of I, I, I build one for me and I build one for the market uh, and I price it as high as the market will pay for it um, you can normally see what other people are charging not 5k off that don't blitz the market with you know cheap dumping um, and the other thing is perhaps working in a buddy system. So get a mate to bring you mats, craft him the ship for free, but make a deal where he gives you extra mats, 50% extra mats or something like that, so that you make two ships for him and you can build one for you. So that's crafting. Now, of course, the oldest profession in the world, and indeed one of the best professions in the world, is prostitution. So what do I mean by prostitution in naval action? No, it's not the sort of thing you think about hanging around the docks waiting for the sailors to come in. It's selling those things that really should be dear to you um, that for some reason you don't want to use yourself. So one thing is you can sell your labour hours, hours. You can chat in Nation and say, I'll make stuff for money um, and sell your labour hours. But there are ports that actually allow you to create a building where you can exchange your labour hours to buy a labour hours note and then you can sell that on the market and they sell quite well. Your PVE and PVP marks, you can sell those on the market and if I can get there before the server kicks me out. Uh, one minute, if we go into the shop, you can see here in the marks and there's none for sale. They've all, they've all, oh no, it's because I'm searching for oak, you clown. Uh, here we go, doopy doopy doop, there you go, so each PVE mark, you can sell it for a thousand to the AI, um, or you could put an order in to sell them uh, for less if you wanted to, uh, and I mentioned consumables before, so labour contracts sell for 65,000 at the moment, that gives you 500 hours from memory, sealed bottles, that's a ridiculous price for a sealed bottle, you're a lunatic. Uh, seal bottles aren't that good. They tend to um, contain stuff that helps you buy uh, and build repair kits and provisions. Uh, so you can sell marks. Whenever you sink a ship, if you sail over to it and go below two knots um, and, and try and sort of move your camera around from behind your ship so you're looking at the ship until a little X comes up, you can loot the ship. If it's a warship you've sunk, quite often they have mods on them. These could be skill books. Or they could be mods themselves. You could choose to sell the mods. Um, the other thing you could do, of course, is redeem your PVE marks. And I'll probably have run out of time to do this now, and I've spent most of mine. You can go to the Admiral shop here, and um, you, can, you can go to Blueprints. Um, and I could redeem my... Um, I tried to snow. I need to get seven more, eight. Uh, I've just bought... Uh, I've got no marks left. Um, but yeah, you can you can buy the blueprints, and then you can either sell the blueprint or um, use it to make a ship. But you can sell the blueprint. Uh, blueprint. The other one is um, oh, there we go. That's the server gone, so there'll be no other ones. Um, so you you can buy the blueprints and sell the blueprints, um, and that's another form of, of of what I rather rudely refer to as prostitution. So a quick wrap up. Um, I feel as though I went through that fast enough to keep the video short. You can always watch it again. Uh, first of all, have fun. Uh, if it's a job, you're doing it wrong. Um, we're meant to be playing games. We've got our jobs or we're at school or uni during the day. We don't need another one when we get home at night. Um, even if you're unemployed, you don't need a game to be a job. I'm not quite sure it will qualify you for benefits anyway. So I mix it up. I do a bit of biffing. Um, I might do a delivery mission, and on the way to do the delivery mission, I'll do some trading. Um, I'll stop by and pick up some bits and bobs on the way. I'll use the trader tools so that I earn money as I do my delivery mission. Um, 
The other thing to watch out for is fishing. There's three fish, I think. Uh, manta rays, bull sharks, and something else. Uh, and those fish are worth 5k a go. So um, that's like winning the lotto when you're in your little basic cutter. So keep your eye out for them. Don't convert them into fish meat. You've just thrown 5k away. Sharks, I think it is. Sharks, manta rays, and I oh know, bull sharks, manta rays, and something else. Flying fish, maybe. They're worth 5k each. Um, salt is used in provisions, and provisions is used in shipbuilding. So if you are a crafter and you're going to be building ships, don't be throwing your salt away or even your fish. You're going to need it for um, making your provisions. Uh, if you really want to make money from trading, you have to travel. There's some fantastic trade routes away from the national capitals. In fact, the national capitals are really where you want to be making money from the player economy. Um, you tend not to get a great deal on the AI. I know some scurrilous dogs, um, they know how to make a bob or two by basically buying all the AI shit and then selling it for a little bit higher. Uh, that's not very nice. Um, so, yeah, travel around a bit. Um, have your risk plan. If you're going to go all in, if you're going to put every penny into the hold of your ship and you die, don't come running to me when you break both your legs. So I like to build up a, a reserve, if you like, and, and, and even, uh, as you see, I've got two indefatigables now. I have a spare ship. Now, that makes me braver, right? Because one of the things, here's an interesting thing. If you go into combat scared of losing your ship, you're much more likely to lose your ship. If you go into combat knowing you've got a spare, you could be aggressive, and that scares the opponent. It might not scare the opponent if they're really good at, at PvP which case you're going to lose your ship anyway because you're fighting someone who's really good at PvP. But if, like many of us, they're just average or indeed a bit crap, um, if you have a spare ship and you think to yourself, I'm going balls deep, I'm going to have this bugger, um, going in aggressively and not caring about your pixels is one of the best ways of winning. I mean, obviously, don't be stupid. You still have to have a plan and you still have to play reasonably well. But not having fear... Um, you'll see players who all of a sudden start looking to run away at the wrong point in a battle. Um, perhaps they've got one of your sides weak, and if they spent the time to get onto that weak side, they'd have you. But because you've got one of their sides weak, um, and they're more scared of losing the ship than you, they'll start to run. And as soon as they do that, you've probably got them, unless they're in some fleet-footed boat, if such a thing exists. Um, I mentioned at the top of the video, I've probably given away a million, half a million, a million. Um, and so that's over the last half a dozen days. Uh, I know I've given a couple of ships away. Uh, I've helped people cannon up their uh, indies and their surprises. Uh, helped people set ports up. Uh, given people uh, a float to start trading with. Uh, and that isn't because I'm nice. Um, I'm probably not even nice. Uh, these are friends or they're friends of friends or the people in the same nation as me. Maybe they've just lost their trader and they've got nothing left. And I'd rather them have a build the trader for them than then quit the game. And for me, it's a way of paying it forward because perhaps in another two weeks, I'll be sailing back to Port Morant and some pesky pirate will tag me and I'll yell for help. And one of those guys that I helped out, they'll be nearby and they'll think, I'll go and help him. They better bloody add. Um, but yeah, maybe one day I'll need a, a, a bit of a handout. So I think within your clan and within your circle of friends, you should always pay it forward. Um, I tend not to do it as a loan. Uh, I'll do it to a loan if I don't really like them. Um, uh, and, and again, I repeat, have fun. If you're not having fun, if you're just doing this to make money, uh, you're doing it wrong. And actually, if you're only doing it to make money and you're really doing well at make money, you should probably go and play on the foreign exchange market or something like that rather than wasting your time in a game. Uh, I think that's it. Is that it? Oh, yeah. Um, little comment before I sign off. Add your own tips to the comments because I'm sure there's 20 things I haven't thought of. Um, now, you can screw the system. Um, but remember, it's your nation's economy that you're screwing. So um, I think it's fair enough if you're the only person selling a uh, La Ocean that you, you sell it for a good profit. Um, but don't buy all the ships on the market and resell them for a higher price. That's kind of a, a dirty trick. Um, like all things, 
uh, in the beginning it's it's much harder uh, and sometimes it can seem a bit daunting and overwhelming but I promise you once you've got your first 200k making your next 200k is two trips versus the hundred trips it took to get to 200k once you've got your first 500k uh, getting to a million is two trips so money goes to money uh, it is absolutely brutal when it all goes wrong and you lose a big lump of stuff and that is how it should be i don't want a welfare game i want a game where when i'm sailing around with a full load of cargo every time something appears on my screen i want that little bit of you know um fear um and and you know like all naval action players my screen is the cleanest screen of all my gamers friends because one speck on that horizon and it, it causes near heart palpitations then you discover it's a bit of snot and you go oh yeah now I can relax a bit. Uh, and uh, I think I've said it enough. I'm going to say it one more time. Friends are the answer. Uh, buddy up with people and you'll have a lot more fun and you'll make a lot more money. So that's it for my How to Make Money Redux. I hope it helped you. I hope you learned something. And if you didn't learn something and knew it all, thanks for watching it anyway. Uh, and I'll be looking forward to your tips in the comments. So give us a like. Uh, give us a subscribe. Um, Look forward to your comments. I will see you in the ocean and I'll catch you.